Welcome to my latest video. I was undecided where to go fishing today because we'd had two days of continuous rain and also it was very very blustery. So the choice was between the river which I thought might be a bit high or the lake which here in the Fens it's a very open lake and fishing in a blustery wind um, can be extremely challenging. In the end I decided to take a chance on the river but as it turned out that perhaps wasn't the best decision. When I arrived um, the River Ouse and here the mill stream which is um, a side stream of the River Ouse was as you can see racing down and um, had overflowed onto the bank here. The mill stream being obviously a man-made channel that was constructed in the past to feed the mill machinery um, is straight with, with no bends or natural features that create slack water um, as, as would be the case in, in a normal river. So I decided to try dropping a bait down near the edge where there were little rafts of um, dead reeds etc um, which formed sort of slacks but very very um, very very narrow um, it was more in hope than anticipation but I thought I'd give it a try what I didn't try while I was there and it only really occurred to me when I viewed this video on getting home was I should have tried dropping the bait in the still water that you can see just to my right. That, that's normally the, the bank where I sit and fish, um, so it's not very deep. But, but given the circumstances and given that it does get a little bit deeper as you get towards the main flow, there is a good chance there might have been a fish or two in there. So um, on reflection, I missed an opportunity there perhaps. Well, my attempts here didn't, didn't um, provide any action. So I moved down just a few yards where a reed bank near the edge of the water created another small slack. And I repeated basically what I'm doing here, dropping the bait down the edge in the hope that there might be a fish or two uh, waiting there. So here I'm just about to try this second spot. Um, this, this view gives you a much better idea of the power of the flow going down the mill stream. You can see it's, it's really racing down. It also shows the wind in mean, the trees around. Um, and it was the wind that, that caused me to make, to make the decision to come here to the river today rather than sit on an open lake. You can also hear the wind on the being picked up on the camera microphone, so it um, gives you a good idea. Anyway, um, here, much the same as the previous spot, I was just dropping down the edge. Um, again, it was a very narrow, not the slack, but the, the flow was um, slightly less strong near the edge due to the effect of the rebank, um, which was just on my right. But it wasn't really offering much of a refuge for the fish, so I wasn't all that surprised when um, I didn't get a take or any indication. There was, I was using, I was, I was actually touch ledgering, so I had the line over my finger, which is what I tend to do in these circumstances. And even if a small fish um, has a nibble, you can you can usually feel it. But on this occasion, absolutely nothing. So it was time to move again and I went to what they call the New Cut which is a canal like section like a backwater which actually f runs into the Weirpool um, uh, which you can see just appearing on the left of the video. Now my hope was that with the torrent of the Weirpool the, at least some fish might move into this, this channel and give me um, an opportunity to get a bite or two. Having settled in, my first cast was absolutely perfect. Um, 
you may have just seen the, the plop on the other side there, literally a few inches from the reeds, which was what I was seeking to do, but I assure you I'm not usually um, that accurate. But um, it was a good cast and I, I had hopes that if there were some fish lurking around they might be in that in that spot. They, they normally like to stay close to the shelter of reeds or other vegetation. You can probably hear the roar of the water coming over that weir. Um, really, really powerful. As I sit there patiently waiting for something to happen. Well, I did sit there patiently, but nothing happened, unfortunately. Um, again, I'm touch ledgering at this point. So my the line is over my finger, so even a nibble on the bait, I should have should have felt it, let alone a bite. But unfortunately, there was absolutely no indication of, of fish being interested in my bait at all. So here I am trying another spot and again, um, by some miracle, I, I cast exactly where I wanted to be. Um, in fact, just about an inch or two too far, but fortunately I was able to pull the bait out of those reeds. Um, so it dropped literally on the edge of the reeds there and um, again, <laughs> despite the accuracy of the cast and my expectations of perhaps some interest in the bait, um, there was nothing. So now it was time, as they say, to try something completely different. I went over to the lock cutting. This, this channel here leads up to the lock. So as you would imagine, it's, it's fairly static water, um, protected from the, the flow. And you've just seen me make a cast over again towards the edge of the reeds, which seems to be my favorite technique. And again, I managed to pull it off. Um, and I'm now going to try to set up a, a bobbing on the um, line just to give me a better bite indication. Nothing high tech here. This is a wine bottle cork with a hair clip through the middle. The hair clip being the bit that pinches on the line and with a piece of string tied to the um, rounded end of the hair clip which I secure to the rod rest. Um, a trick I, I learned when I was a lad, really, before the days of sophisticated fishing tackle technology, when we had to really make do with what we could put together ourselves. The lack of sophistication has now caused me to revisit the bobbin and just um, alter things a little bit to pull out a bit more line, really, to drop the bobbin down a bit further. So if I were to get a bite, the, the range of movement on the bobbin would be a little bit more than I had it set originally. You probably have noticed that the bank here is quite well manicured compared to where I was fishing on the mill stream. Well, that's because um, you can just see on the right there a piece of concrete. This, this is the concrete temporary mooring platform for the barges and the boats as they wait to go into the lock and the area around it is actually um, looked after the grass is cut and it's it's a bit more like fishing on a commercial lake really. The difference being here is I think I probably would have had a bite by now on a commercial lake whereas as you can see um, so far nothing. And so it was to continue um, not a touch not a touch at all. Um, there seemed to be quite a lot of weed on the bottom of the on the bottom of the channel, um, which I kept snagging. So it was difficult to know whether the bait had actually ended up in a um, in a place where the fish could find it. For my final attempt of the day, I moved to the end of that lock cutting to where it joins the main flow. So here you can see the main flow further out where the 
more static water um, nearer the bank and between the two there, there's a crease in the current which is often a good place to put a bait when you're looking for chub in particular. But I didn't get a touch and I think I must conclude that I'm perhaps not very good at fishing in these sorts of conditions. If you have watched what has turned out to be another fishless outing, <laughs> thank you very much for your indulgence um, and I hope next time I do better. But for today that's it um, and until my next video thank you again for watching and bye for now.